Hi Matrix and welcome to this video on exam prep for finance brought to you by the answer series. Having worked through all the sections in the finance topic, hopefully you now feel ready to tackle some exam questions. Before we get started with questions though, let's look at a couple of techniques that can be helpful when writing an exam. Firstly, read the question through carefully before piling in to answer it. Then, as you'll probably remember it being mentioned, that only the final answer must be rounded off and not to round off midstream. Also, to help with not rounding off, make use of the full accuracy and memory capacity on the calculator. This is really important for accuracy when doing financial calculations. And then, the context of the question, which is the story, is where you will find the information to direct you as to what is required in terms of units and which formula you need to use. It is useful always to take note of the mark allocation. A two mark question, for example, indicates to us that the question shouldn't take too much time and also shouldn't take too many calculations. So catch yourself before launching into a full page of working for just two marks. And so in terms of managing one's time during the exam, we suggest you aim to work a mark a minute. The full exam for both paper one and paper two is out of 150 marks and you get 180 minutes in which to complete each one. So if you can stick to a mark a minute throughout, you will have 30 minutes at the end. And you can then use this half an hour to go back to any question you either got stuck on or maybe you reserved for this time because of its challenging nature. So, instead of spending too much time on that tricky two-mark question, for example, and starting to feel stressed about things, rather leave it knowing that you'll have time to come back to it in this final time slot. And then lastly, a useful technique that has actually been illustrated here, in fact, for questions with sub-questions, is to mark off each part question once you've completed it. This will make sure you don't skip over any part questions. It will also show nice and clearly when you're going back over to check your work what questions you still need to give attention to. Let's look now at some questions as you prepare for your exams. Remember to read the question through in full first before focusing in on each part. Pause the video now to give yourself time to tackle this one on your own first before we go through it together. Let's look first at the solution to 1.1. The words used in the story and the information given is where we will find what we need to do. So let's go and see what we have been given. We've been told that Lesejo bought a new car for 360,000 Rand. In other words, the car's original or present value is this 360,000 Rand. It also says that the car depreciates on a reducing balance and will be worth 200,000 Rand in five years. So Therefore, we need to use the compound decrease formula with the reduced amount A being 200,000 Rand and N five years. What the question is asking us to find is I. Did you get 11,09% for I? Pause here to check through the working if necessary. The second part question is only worth two marks, so this tells us that it shouldn't require a whole lot of calculations and ideally not too much time. It says the cost of a new car over this five-year time period will increase, so we use the compound increase formula. And here our answer for how much the car will cost in five years' time is 531,411 Rand and 53 cents. There is a lot more to read for this third part question. Pause for a moment if you want to give it another quick read through. This question is about Lesejo planning for the future. If we take the cost of what a new car is likely to cost her in five years time, which is your answer to 1.2, and what she is likely to get from the sale of her old car, which is the information in 1.1, the difference between these two amounts will be this amount here, known as the shortfall. Because Lesejo wants to work out her monthly payments to cater for this future value, we look to solve for x in the future value annuity formula. Remember to use the memory for the monthly interest rate when preparing to do the calculation. And then if we look to the question for information on how many months she wants to make payments for, 
It is up until the 60th month, but only starting at the end of the ninth month. So there are no payments for the first eight months, which means she will make 52 payments altogether. The solution for X tells us that Lesejo needs to pay 5,498 rand and 26 cents into her fund each month in order to cater for this shortfall. On to question two now. Pause the video to read through the whole question and then give the solution your best effort. So a small two mark question to start with. Here we have that a population has decreased. So with this and the words on a reducing balance means we must use the compound decrease formula. The population is sitting at 5,600 people and they want to know the size of the population 20 years ago which means that even though the 5,600 is the current population size, in this time frame it is the future amount and they are wanting to know the size of the population 20 years ago. This answer tells us that there were about 10,298 people in this rural town 20 years ago. In the first part of 2.2, we have been asked to work out the effective interest rate. Remember the nominal and effective interest rate equation, which is considered over a one-year period. Using the memory for the monthly interest rate here is useful. And then if we look at the equation, the annual interest rate of 7,8% is compounded monthly, so this exponent here must be 12. And now to work out the effect this has on the interest for the year, we solve for this i here. And we see in this question that the effective interest rate is 8,08%. You'll see in this next part question why each word used is so important. The words starting immediately show that it is not your typical question. Andy withdrew 8,000 Rand at the end of each month. We have been asked to calculate how much remained in his account at the end of two years, which means this is an outstanding balance question. Because it says at the end of two years, this means we are looking at time period 24. So firstly, if he hadn't withdrawn anything from the account, the 250,000 that he inherited would have been compounded forward 24 times. But he has been taking 8,000 Rand out every month, starting immediately, remember, which means he has made 25 withdrawals. The amount remaining in the account at the end of two years is just over 75,000 Rand. This third part question is asking how long it will take for our answer in 2.2.2, the 75,653 Rand and 11 cents, to grow to the original value of the inheritance. In other words, we are being asked to solve for n in the compound increase formula. You'll see here that it is necessary to use logs in order to solve for n. Again, reading your question carefully is crucial to know what units you are working in and what units your answer needs to be in. Because the interest on the account is compounded monthly, n is going to be the number of months. And so, in order to give our answer in years, you will need to convert. The answer here is telling us that it will take just over 15 years for the remaining balance to increase to the value of the investment. How did these two questions go? Hopefully you are starting to feel closer to being ready for your exams. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like some more preparation and practice, we cover more examples in our next video on exam prep, part two. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.